Hello friends, welcome back. In this session, we shall look at diaphragm. These are the learning objectives for this session. Describing the shape and external features of diaphragm. Discussing its attachment. Explaining the openings present in the diaphragm. Mentioning the neurovascular supply. And listing its actions. Briefly touching its uh, development and outlining the related applied anatomical aspects. The meaning of dia and from is in between partition. There are different partitions in human body. We call them as cavities. In between thoracic cavity which is shown in blue color and abdominal cavity which is shown in pink color we find a partition which is thoraco abdominal diaphragm there are many other diaphragms in the body say diaphragm in the ear which separates the external ear from the middle ear cavity pelvic diaphragm oral diaphragm below the tongue so better to call this as thoraco abdominal diaphragm it is in the shape of dome and it is made up of muscles and fibrous tissue we can call it a musculo aponeurotic dome shaped structure separating abdominal cavity and thoracic cavity This is thoraco abdominal diaphragm seen from above. Transverse section has been taken through the thoracic cage in the lower part. This is the lower part of the sternum. This is thoracic vertebrae. The convex surfaced dome is seen from above here. This is from abdominal side. We can see its concavity. When we take coronal section through the body like this and see from front it appears something like this the right side it forms one dome and left side one more dome in the middle it is depressed so these elevated parts or the highest summit of the diaphragm are called cupula the right cupula is higher up than the left because of the underlying liver which pushes it up in the central part it is tendinous as you are seeing here it arises from all around the body wall and inserts convergingly towards the center so here is all its origin we can see peripherally and centrally it is inserting let me discuss the attachments of diaphragm as i was mentioning it takes origin from the body wall all around and inserts in the central part what skeletal structures it's it finds in in the body wall all around anteriorly it finds sternum at the sides it finds uh, ribs and posteriorly vertebrae so these are the three origins for diaphragm on the back of the lower part of sternum sternal fibers take origin they pass up and posteriorly towards central tendon for insertion the inner surfaces of the lower six ribs give origin for costal fibers they interdigitate with a muscle that is transversus abdominis which also takes origin from here vertebral origin is from lumbar vertebrae 1 and 2 i shall take it up uh, in a while that is about vertebral origin the insertion of diaphragm is in the central part so from the periphery the fibers converge and insert in the central part in the, that is central tendon of diaphragm When we look at this picture, along with this, the anterior fibers, the, their sternal fibers are much higher up in that position. You can see it here. 
the vertebral fibers are lower down which can which are seen here that means contents of the abdomen can reach till the xiphoid and contents of the thoracic cage pass much more lower down because of this dome shape this is right cupola this is left cupola that is highest summit of the dome is called cupola now let us look at vertebral origin these are lumbar vertebrae 1 2 and 3 in front of the lumbar vertebrae on either sides we find longitudinal origin of vertebral fibers of diaphragm so this is right and this is left they look like legs of the diaphragm so we call them as crus right crus and left crus the plural of crus is crura the crural fibers are vertical fibers right side it is stronger and longer it extends from l1 2 and 3 along with intervening intervertebral discs so this is the origin for right crus left crus is short it extends on l1 and l2 with intervening intervertebral disc these are crural origin in between right and left crus there are some arched fibers here so this is called median arcuate ligament median arcuate ligament laterally from the right crust and from the left crust we find one more arched fiber going towards the transverse process of l1 that is medial arcuate ligament from transverse process to the lower border of the 12th rib on either sides we find lateral arcuate ligaments let us see these again in the next picture this is right crust this is left crust this is median arcuate ligament from the right crust to the transverse process of l1 it is right medial uh, medial arcuate ligament left medial arcuate ligament which are covering on the psoas major the thickening of the fascia covering the psoas major makes this medial arcuate ligament thickening of the fascia covering the quadratus lumborum makes lateral arcuate ligament lateral arcuate ligament extends between transverse process of l1 to the lower border of 12th rib let us define how the central tendon of diaphragm is the converging fibers from the periphery towards the center they insert in a leaf shaped central tendon you can see this leaf it is specially having three leaflets so it is called trefoil leaf the central tendon of diaphragm is also in the form of trefoil leaf you can see it here so this is one two and three trefoil leaf it has anterior leaflet right lateral and left lateral leaflets so this is white fiber it shows central tendon it is most of it neurotic in between the junction of anterior and right uh, leaflets we find opening of inferior vena cava just to the right of the midline this opening is located within the central tendon just left to it posteriorly within the musculature of the diaphragm we find opening of esophagus let us look at all the openings in detail these are the three major openings in the diaphragm inferior vena cava opening esophageal opening and aortic opening they are at different levels at thoracic uh, vertebral level 8 it is inferior vena cava opening t10 esophageal opening t12 aortic opening vena cava opening is within the tendon the contraction of diaphragm has action of dilatation on this opening to increase the venous return because of increased abdominal pressure during diaphragmatic contraction 
the effect of contraction of diaphragm is constrictive in uh, to this opening that is esophageal opening because abdominal pressure when it increases this has to be contracted to prevent the regurgitation there is no action on this opening with respect to contraction of the diaphragm because it is fibro uh, osseous tunnel posteriorly it is t12 vertebra and anteriorly it is median arcuate ligament inferior vena cava opening along with inferior vena cava right phrenic nerve also passes remember left phrenic nerve passes directly through the left cupola or left dome of diaphragm along with esophageal opening we find left and right vagus nerves and also esophageal branch of left gastric artery left and right vagus nerve respectively continue as anterior and posterior vagus after rotation of the stomach along with uh, aorta thoracic duct and azygous veins pass through this opening remember left crust of uh, diaphragm has some of the muscle fibers circularly arranged around the esophageal opening which will prevent uh, the regurgitation during contraction of diaphragm and increased abdominal pressure let me identify major openings and associated structures passing through initially this is inferior vena cava opening with right phrenic nerve left phrenic nerve directly passing through the left uh, dome of the diaphragm esophagus and uh, vagus and esophageal branch of left gastric artery aorta thoracic duct and azygous vein let me recollect minor openings first is superior epigastric vessels they are here on either sides of the xiphoid process there is a triangular gap between diaphragm and body wall so this is called space of larry through which superior epigastric vessels pass we can see here these gaps they are existing between the uh, muscular interdigitations between diaphragmatic muscle and transverse subdominus muscle through them intercostal nerves and vessels pass especially musculophrenic vessel passes between 7th and 8th space in the same subcostal nerves and vessels pass below the lateral arcuate ligament on the quadratus lumborum sympathetic chain passes below the medial arcuate ligament on the psoas major the space of larry here if this is uh, this foramen is uh, extended or enlarged that can cause some sort of hernia of abdominal content into thoracic uh, cage so that dilated part of space of larry we call it as foramen of morgagni the hernia is called morgagni's hernia to mention the neurovascular supply diaphragm is supplied by phrenic nerve for its motor activity this is right phrenic nerve this is left right passes through opening along with uh, inferior vena cava it ramifies on the surface underneath there are sternal branches peripheral branches posterior medial and posterior lateral branches the sensory supply in the central part is by phrenic nerve but in the peripheral part the sensations are carried by intercostal nerves artery are phrenic arteries so one what we are seeing here are is inferior phrenic artery which is first branch of abdominal aorta just like that we find superior phrenic artery which is last branch of thoracic aorta above the diaphragm so it also ramifies it supplies diaphragm in the peripheral parts it is supplied by intercostal arteries diaphragm is principal muscle of inspiration in quiet breathing it displaces the contents of abdomen for about 1.5 cm down 
in deep inspiration it displaces 6 to 10 centimeters right dome of the diaphragm is much higher because of the liver to push the liver down more strongly the rice right crust is stronger and longer expulsive actions as a result of increased abdominal pressure are due to the contraction of diaphragm along with muscles of anterior abdominal wall for example crying sneezing coughing laughing vomiting defecation micturation or parturition that is bearing effect during childbirth let us look something about level of diaphragm in recumbent position or sleeping position the abdominal contents are pushing the diaphragm because of the pressure because of the gravity and dome of the diaphragm reaches higher up in thoracic cage this causes decreased tidal volume in sitting position abdominal wall is relaxed and gravity pulls the diaphragm flat downwards this increases tidal volume in standing up position or standing position the level of diaphragm is intermediate this is because of contracted abdominal wall muscles which increase the abdominal pressure slightly so in respiratory distresses to increase the tidal volume person is made to sit and lean forward to have the maximum tidal volume for inspiration peritoneal cavity pleural cavity and pericardial cavity they develop from intra embryonic coelom which is shown in blue color here this is developing pericardial cavity this is peritoneal cavity on either sides of the gut which is shown in red you can see lung buds are invaginating this would be the future pleural cavity there exist a communication between pleural cavity on either sides to peritoneal cavity that is pleuroperitoneal canal in developing embryo when that is sealed or closed that's where diaphragm is developing because it is a separation between thoracic and abdominal cavity once it is closed it appears like this from abdominal side when we visualize it has several components which are forming this diaphragm let us look at them pleuroperitoneal canal is closed by pleuroperitoneal membranes as shown by the picture septum transversum the yellow colored structure whatever is shown here that is developmentally by septum transversum that contributes in the formation of diaphragm dorsal mesentery of esophagus this is esophageal opening here the dorsal mesentery also cons contributes for the formation of diaphragm very near to the vertebrae shelf like projections from the body wall on either sides from the body wall shelf like projections extend towards uh, center so this this is how they are closing the pleuroperitoneal canal from periphery towards center behind the um, central tendon or septum transversum and in on either sides of the dorsal mesenter of esophagus finally the closure is by pleuroperitoneal membranes so all these structures are making contribution for development of diaphragm say if there is failure of development of this pleuroperitoneal membrane on one side that results in defect here and that that will be seen as congenital hernia buckdolox hernia you can see here this is buckdolox hernia because of failure of formation of pleuroperitoneal membrane these are different hernias morgagni's hernia i have mentioned already a triangular space of larry when when is extended the defect may be there in central tendon or it may be there in esophageal opening which results in hiatus hernia 
these are few of the applied anatomical aspects related to diaphragm this is about the hiatus hernia this is normal and this is sliding variety of hiatus hernia where all of the uh, stomach slides inside the esophageal opening and this is para esophageal hiatus hernia this is herniation of abdominal contents into left pleural cavity this is congenital uh, diaphragmatic hernia you can see the intestinal loops coming into left uh, pleural cavity the same can be seen gas in the intestine can be seen here in the uh, thoracic cavity so after all this uh, i have failed to mention very simple uh, clinical application of uh, diaphragm that is hiccup the forceful spasmodic contraction of diaphragm leads into quick inhalation of air that is hiccup This ends the session on diaphragm. Thank you.